Hey, how's it going? It's Adam from Stark Medical. Welcome to your CardioLine 100-200S ECG onboarding video resource. Okay, so what we're going to cover in the video is unboxing and setting up the ECG once you've received the unit. Secondly, we're going to go through how to conduct an ECG with the CardioLine device. And then finally, to make it custom to your practice and how you would like it, we're going to go through some of the settings and customizations of the unit. All right, so let's go through the unboxing and setting up of your ECG. So in front of you, you should have your CardioLine ECG box. So let's get to unboxing the device. You'll notice as you open the box straight away, you'll see a warranty registration, scan the QR code and register your unit with us. Once you've completed the registration, open the box which was underneath the registration card and in there you will find your accessories for the ECG. So you will have your power cable for Australian power. You will also have a set of AHA plug style cables. You'll have one full packet of CardioLine ECG Z fold paper as well as a sample packet of ECG electrodes. Uh, the orange bag is a protective case for your ECG if you wish to use that. And you will also find a set of alligator clips. These are all inclusive with the unit purchase. If you now remove the accessories box, you will see located underneath that box will be your ECG device. If you remove the ECG from the protective bubble wrap and place that down on the table, you should now have everything ready to go to set up your device. Take both of the black power cables out and connect those together. And then on the back side of the device, behind the screen, locate the power plug and insert the power cable into the CardioLine unit. Okay, let's connect the ECG cables. Remove the cables from the packet and then located on the right hand side of the device is the ECG cable plug. Insert the plug into the cable connector socket, and then with the screws from the plug, spin those clockwise to fasten the cables to the device. Okay, so let's load the paper now. So as you can see on screen where the arrow is, you will see a slit. Place your fingers in the slit and then as viewed on the screen, put your thumb on the right hand side of the printer door slot and then pull up. If you pull up with a little bit of force, you will reveal the paper slot where your ECG paper will sit. When you open the door, you should have one sheet of sample paper in the device. So go ahead and remove that paper Next, take out your packet of ECG paper and remove the plastic wrap and the top sheet. So load the full packet of paper in to the slot, push it all the way in and you'll notice that the top sheet should have a black mark in the left hand corner, um, which will match up with the printer sensor. So on the right hand side in the red circle, you will see the printer sensor. So the printer sensor and the black mark need to line up. So fold the paper sheet over the black sensor and then close the door. Finally, we're going to plug in the power cable to a power port and turn the power on. Then finally power on the ECG by the orange button and we are ready to go for a test. Okay, now you have your cardio line unit set up. Let's work on conducting an ECG. Okay. So you turn the device on by the orange power button and once the device is loaded, the screen, then it will bring you to the home screen here. Now what you can see originally is as we connect up our patient uh, to the cable set, you will start to see your leads change from red to green. Now when all of the leads are green, the screen will change to be completely visible. So I can see my whole trace quality across the screen. 
So on the right hand side of the device is where I can adjust the settings if I choose to in the middle of an exam. Otherwise, I'll show you later how we can customize and set them up to be the same every single time. But I'll get a nice 12 by one shot here. And we can see that I have my leads fully visible on the screen. On the left hand side of the device, you'll see an ID button. This is where we can enter patient ID via the keyboard. So I'll just enter a random patient ID. Now, the device itself comes standard with Glasgow interpretation. So for you to get an accurate interpretation for, based off the software, I need to enter gender, age, and race. Now, they're not mandatory, but if you want to activate the Glasgow interpretive algorithm every time, this is what I would recommend. I'm going to enter male, so I can either type male or I can select on the right hand side by F3 and I can change it by the drop down. I can navigate down by F1 and F2, so up and down F1, F2, or if I just want to navigate to my next field, I can push the enter button here, which is the big button on the keypad. I'll enter my date of birth and if I click enter it will give me my age and then my race again I can either click through here and toggle through if you choose to otherwise I'll leave that unknown for now and then you click done once you've entered all of the fields which you wish to enter you can enter anything else on screen that you would like to otherwise I'm going to say done. So now I have my name in the top left hand corner of the ECG device and now I'm ready to capture an ECG. So I can click auto for 10 seconds, manual manually print paper and to stop the printout we hit stop. Link is when we insert a USB stick into the top of the device to export the data. So I'm going to click auto which will run its analysis and then it will automatically print my ECG for me. Now if you wish to have a print preview I will show you how to do so but we tear the paper off and then I have my full completed ECG here. Now, as I mentioned before, the black mark goes over the print sensor and it will automatically cut off one perfect sheet of paper every time. And then we close that down. To save you power over time, you can either power down the ECG at the end of every exam or you can always power that down at the end of the day. All right, now you've learned how to use the device and capture your ECGs, let's work on exporting those PDFs. Okay, everyone, now we're gonna go through how to export a report onto a USB stick. Um, so, what I'll do is we'll capture an ECG. Now I know my patient is in flat line, but We'll take the ECG anyway to show you how we can capture an ECG and export that data. So I'll press auto. And it will print my ECG. Now, we can do it one of two ways. You can export a file individually or we can export via uh, the ECG archive. So what I'll do is I'll remove the rubber casing for the USB cover which is located at the top of the device. I'm going to plug in my USB stick into the unit and then with your USB stick inserted you click link and that ECG will export to your USB stick. Now as you saw it was copying just there. Now, the other way that we can do this is we can export via uh, multiple recordings. So what you're going to do is you're going to click F6 for your menu. This is where we find the ECG archive. And then you click F2 for the ECG archive. Now, at the moment I have a total of seven exams. 
on the USB. Oh, sorry, seven exams internally embedded into my device storage. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click a link and it's going to copy all of those files straight to my USB stick. From there, if you want to delete all the exams, you can at the end of the day. Otherwise, just to make sure, turn the device off. Once it's powered down, you can safely remove that USB stick from the device. And I'll show you how to get your data. Okay, so now let's extract the data off the USB stick. Um, so once you plug a USB stick into your PC, you'll notice that you may have a number of folders. Um, I've set this up to show you the differences. So when we captured the first recording, um, I have a separate folder for each capture. So you'll see in the PDF folder that I have one file located. And that was because I individually exported that file. And you can see that PDF is now saved here. Or the other way, uh, we did the mass export from the patient archive is located in this folder. So click on the PDF icon and then you will locate all of the files that you have exported off the device. And then you'll be able to locate individual files based off the patient ID. So if you're entering your ID as you're going through your exams, uh, then you'll easily be able to locate those files uh, once you've exported that data. From here, you can drag and drop to a communal share folder. We can also import those PDFs as a clinical image into your uh, patient management system if it will take a PDF. So that's a quick and efficient way of how we can export the data off the device and then place those reports um, and assign them to your patient management file. Okay, okay, last so but not least, let's how to set up the, the unit and, the data. and configure the unit let's to be custom to how you would unit like up it. So that every time I turn it okay, on, last but not least, let's set up the unit and configure the unit to be... Okay, so we're going to go through the device and we're going to customise the device to how we would like to see it uh, as standards from the home screen. Um, and I'm going to show you how to save those settings in the front end. So firstly, power on your unit and wait for the unit to load. So when you're looking for the settings of the device and how we're going to customize all of our filters. So what we're going to look to customize is the standard layout that we see on the home screen. Um, and then from there, our filters and our print export, as well as what we're going to do is we're going to set up a print uh, preview before we finally capture the ECG. So F6 is your settings menu and then F5 is your settings. Same way with all CardioLine ECGs, you navigate up and down by F1 and F2. You're going to toggle through the yellow selected field with F3 or you can move a whole page um, via F4 and F5 and back is to back out. Okay. So, settings, all right, so what I want to do, I want to change my print format. So previously, our print format was 12 by 1. So I'm going to page down, and my lead format is what I see on the home screen. So I'm going to change mine to 6 by 1. The muscle filter, when you first get the device will be set to off to cause any confusion in lead artifact change that to 25 Hertz interpretation you can keep short we can change that to long or turn it off I would recommend keeping it short but if you would like to change that to a long interpretation you can do so here so this is on page 2 I'm going to move down to page 3 now so these are my lead printouts. So what I'm going to do, page down, page four. Okay, so my printout format. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to the three by four by one. So that will give me 
three, lots of four, two and a half second segments, plus a rhythm lead at the bottom. So I'm going to save that, and I'm going to enable a print preview. So the print preview is located not on page one. So on page two, auto print, you're going to turn that to off. Now all of the settings that I have just changed have not been saved yet and they won't save or become a standard until you turn the unit off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back out, go to the home screen. Now remember we changed it to six by one. So I'm going to turn the device off just to take a little bit of time. So my settings have just saved and now I'm going to power my unit back on and the settings will always be standard based off me turning the device on and turning it back, turning it off, sorry, and turning it back on. All right, so as I mentioned to you before, we had 12 by one, now we have six by one, and if I capture an ECG, remember it was automatically printing for me before, so auto. Now my print preview has changed and the device isn't printing for me. If I hit print, it will automatically print for me, but let's say that there was a, an arrhythmia or there was a bit of artifact um, or there was something on the screen that I didn't like so I want to change that. Basically we close that down and we redo an ECG. So I'm not wasting my paper. I'll capture an ECG again and this time I'm happy with the quality of the trace or there is an arrhythmia that I wanted to, um, that I did capture that was an artifact so I'm going to hit F1 now and that's going to print my report for me. So this is a nice little backup to save paper in the long run um, that's not going to automatically print reports if you accidentally press the wrong button. Um, so once my report has been printed, it will also save in the back end so then I can export that data. But that's how we customize all the settings um, within the device. Okay, thank you so much for your time. You've reached the end of the video. If you need any assistance over the phone, please contact us on our customer service line. Alternatively, for any orders, you can call us as well. For any troubleshooting or product support, please contact us on one of the three emails that you see attached to the video. Otherwise, thank you so much for your time and all the best of luck with your ECG.